At Kennedy Space Center, NASA is pushing the future of aviation. Mach 1.35 is our target today at 32,000 feet. They're flying F-18 fighter jets off Florida's east coast to produce ear-shattering sonic booms. The plan? Better understand those booms, then prevent them. So one day, commercial air travel times to anywhere on Earth can be cut in half. The long-term goal of tests like this is quiet supersonic transports, business jets and airliners that can crisscross the country supersonic and won't disturb the population. It's a big project. That's because in the commercial aviation world, sonic booms are a big deal. When anything is traveling through the air, it's pushing the air out of the way. It's creating a pressure change. What's a pressure change? A sound. Airplanes flying supersonic, it's going faster than sound. So it's going faster than its pressure wave. So when it arrives, the pressure changes instantaneously, it creates what we call a shock wave two loud pressure impulses, that bang, bang sound, all under the flight path of the airplane to a distance of about 25 miles on either side of the flight path is affected by the sonic boom. That's why it's such a problem. That's why you really have to reduce it because so many people would be affected by this loud sound if you were tried to fly across the country. So one of the most important things to figure out in the sonic boom research is how quiet is quiet enough. Research into supersonic flight really began 70 years ago, on October 14, 1947, when Chuck Yeager flew an experimental Bell X-1 rocket plane into the record books as the first confirmed pilot to break the speed of sound in level flight. Before Yeager's record, many thought the shock waves created at that speed, 758 miles or 1,220 kilometers per hour, would tear an aircraft apart. Luckily for him, and the rest of the world, he proved them wrong. That early research helped pave the way for modern fighter jets and also the Concorde, the world's most famous attempt at supersonic commercial aviation to date. At a max speed of Mach 2.04, the Concorde recorded its fastest journey from New York to London on January 1, 1983, taking just two hours and 56 minutes. Thanks to noise pollution, Concorde was mainly used for routes over water, and that kept the airline's interest in supersonic travel low. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta, you are all online. With the help of today's research, NASA hopes to change that. This particular test, we're gathering data on sonic booms and the variability that you can expect on the ground due to the atmosphere, so the atmospheric turbulence due to fluctuations in the wind or temperature can change the boom that you get at the ground. We have a couple different microphone arrays set up where we're recording the sonic boom as it travels from the aircraft to the ground. We also have a microphone that is attached to a motor glider that's flying above the turbulent boundary layer. Because it's a motor glider, they can actually shut the engine off so everything's very quiet. So we've got kind of the undisturbed shock wave and then the ground array gets it after passing through the turbulence layer. If you subtract the difference between the two, now you can figure out what uh, effect the turbulence had on the sonic boom. They've already gathered data over the dry California desert. Now it's the hot, humid Florida coast where the booms should have a sharper crack. We'd like to make it so that the sonic boom is so quiet, it may not be hearable over just normal conversation. It sounds like someone three or four doors down from you slammed their car door. You know, you can hear that it happened, but it's, it's so muted and far away, it's not a problem. As far as we can tell, the test went very well. We had good weather conditions, moderate turbulence, which is one of the things we're definitely looking for. This data will feed into a display that we're working on developing that will provide the pilot in the cockpit an indication of what his boom is doing real time so that he can then avoid population centers if the weather conditions are causing it to be louder than expected on the ground. NASA has even begun designing and wind tunnel testing a low boom flight demonstrator, an experimental supersonic plane with a specialized shape to naturally soften its sonic boom. 
The hope is that nobody on the ground will even know that you're flying overhead supersonic. Then there's the work of private aerospace company Boom. They're using modern materials and improved aerodynamics and engine technology to make a supersonic jet that's 30% more efficient than Concorde. Add all this R&D together, and suddenly the world of cheap and quiet supersonic travel over land sounds a lot closer than ever before. It is really neat looking out to the future. Not just I can go supersonic, but you and everybody else can go supersonic. The big thing is I think it, it helps bring the world closer together, or at least closer together quicker.